It feels like it's been forever since I've sat down to watch a superhero movie, and to be completely honest, I've kind of been wanting to watch one for a while now. Now normally, I'm typically ready to tear apart these superhero movies that are rated poorly, Fantastic Four and Green Lantern both being prime examples of this. In this case, I'm somewhat conflicted, but in a good way for once. I can genuinely understand how people might not like Batman and Robin or may have not enjoyed Batman and Robin because it's not what they wanted out of a Batman movie. However, after watching this movie with an open mind for the first time in years, I'm willing to admit that I genuinely enjoy this movie. In the best case scenario, Batman and Robin feels like one big budget, two hour long Saturday morning cartoon special. In the worst case scenario, Batman and Robin is a flawed yet enjoyable movie, and it wouldn't be an I don't beat games video if we didn't dive into both aspects of a movie. So let's set up the bat signal and dive into Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. I entirely understand that a lot of people hate this movie, and I fully understand that the people who hate this movie are willing to die on that hill, which I can honestly respect. Just to remind you, I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong or to insult you for disliking this movie. However, I do think a lot of people were overly harsh on Batman and Robin. For instance, my only major criticism I have regarding Batman and Robin is that all of the non-superhero parts within this movie are straight up boring. Every time this movie cuts away to build up the relationships between Batman, Robin, Alfred, or Batgirl, these scenes feel like a chore to watch or at least feels forced. Understandably, every superhero movie has to include these scenes to create a side plot to get viewers to be invested in its cast of characters, but this specific movie could have done without most of those scenes. The core reason being that these characters have little to no chemistry amongst one another when they're not being superheroes. Their day-to-day -day plot isn't interesting because most of these characters aren't interesting people. George Clooney's Bruce Wayne isn't the mysterious, intriguing billionaire that this movie wants us to believe. Michael Goff's Alfred Pennyworth is essentially a plot device throughout the entirety of this movie and is less of the brutally honest caretaker that we're used to seeing. Chris O'Donnell's Robin is intentionally obnoxious, and while that is a job well done, it doesn't mean we want to see so much side content regarding Robin despite the title of the movie. And finally, Alicia Silverstone's Batgirl is arguably the best character in this movie because she's entertaining and she consistently acts like an actual comic book character unlike her supporting cast. Despite these characters being flawed people, when they come together as superheroes it's like a magical switch is turned on. They're forced to put their pride aside so they can focus on saving Gotham and saving the world. In those moments, you almost can't take your eyes off of them because they're shining under the spotlight that's on them. It's like this lighthearted chemistry comes out of nowhere and it positively amplifies the campiness of Batman and Robin. They're suddenly bouncing off of each other with funny one-liners that stick their landing and doing some ridiculously campy 90s movie action that you'd come to expect in an older superhero movie like Batman and Robin. That's not the only thing that positively amplifies the campiness of the movie. You can also add the neon bright lights shining across Gotham bringing life to a city that's typically depicted as dark and gloomy. The zany villains that are Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy, and Bane. The over-the-top, ridiculously detailed architecture that still gives Gotham that gothic look we've come to expect over time. And the consistently bright color palette that's used throughout this movie to remind you that this movie is meant to feel like a comic book brought to life. In comparison to movies like Batman Returns, which I made a video about for my Christmas special last year, Batman and Robin was forced to be the opposite of its predecessor. This was mostly due to DC forcing Schumacher to make a family-friendly movie in order to sell a ton of toys. Despite a majority of viewers and or reviews hating this aspect of the movie, Schumacher explains exactly why I appreciate the colorful, lighthearted aspects of Batman and Robin. You've got hot and cold, you know, exactly. you have got these two great extremes, 
And then we can put the world of Batman, you know, right in the middle of all of that. The beautiful part about being a superhero fan is that we're constantly fed new takes on the same characters or universe that we know and love. While that is a good thing, it feels like we've lost the ability to enjoy or appreciate each new take. Instead, we're constantly looking for negative aspects of a new iteration of a character so we can compare it to a previous iteration that we specifically love. Be it Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, we think that we have an idea as to what would be the perfect take on these characters. If you just take X from this movie, Y from this movie, and maybe a little bit of Z from both movies, this would make the perfect iteration of this superhero, is how we train ourselves to think when it comes to these superhero movies. Relating this frustration back to Batman and Robin, this movie was a victim of this exact thinking. People were so hellbent on either wanting another Batman that was similar to Michael Keaton's take. Not that I blame them, Michael Keaton's Batman is iconic. Or another dark and brooding Batman similar to Val Kilmer that this take on Batman was immediately shunned. I'm not even trying to defend the Bruce Wayne aspect of George Clooney's Batman considering I didn't necessarily like it nor hate it considering we've seen so many better iterations of Bruce Wayne at this point in time. But he has a point when he said this in an interview. I don't think anybody is going to feel sorry for and listen to a guy going, woe is me, my parents died when I was four. So the only thing we tried to do was give him a little less weight to carry on his shoulders. The idea of Bruce Wayne, let alone Batman, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous to buy into the idea of this dark and brooding billionaire bachelor running around as a superhero saving the crime-filled city of Gotham. Why not flip the script and showcase how ridiculous that concept is by creatively making this character and this universe over the top? Why not make everything super colorful and aesthetically pleasing? Why not have these villains make self-aware jokes and terrible plans that could never exist in the real world but can exist in a comic book? Why not take a comic book's universe and turn it into a movie that feels and looks like a live action comic book? When you think about these questions, are those things really that insulting? Outside of Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, there's only ever been one time where I genuinely feel like showcasing the origins of Batman in live action has worked. The show Gotham. Do you know why that works? It works because Gotham spends time showcasing the long-lasting effects of Bruce Wayne's trauma and growth into becoming the caped crusader that most people come to expect when you think of Batman. On top of that, it explores all of the typical Batman villains and their origins while also showing how Gotham rapidly grew to become a crime-filled city. It uses timeless set pieces and amazing architecture to help you buy into the ideas trying to sell you without taking you out of its universe due to poor character writing, poor creative decisions, or weak villains. Gotham gives you the serious and darker tone of the universe that you think of when you think about Batman. It allows these classic villains to still be comic book characters and act a little campy without going to the extent of Batman and Robin. These decisions allow the show to excel throughout its several season duration. If you can't tell by now, I legitimately love Gotham and think you should watch my video about why you should watch Gotham. Yes, I know, shameless plug, but I promise it's worth your time. In the case of Batman and Robin, it might be the only live action movie where all the following things collectively happen and work. Batman having an actual lighthearted personality. Gotham feeling like it's straight out of a comic book because of its over the top set design. And the villains legitimately acting like they're stupid, campy, self aware comic book villains. Yes, it's different and not what you expect when you think of Batman or Gotham, but that doesn't make it terrible. That doesn't make it as bad as other terrible comic book movies such as Fantastic Four or Green Lantern. Do you know what all of these things make Batman and Robin? Brave. Batman and Robin is a brave movie because it embraces exactly what it's meant to do. 
despite the circumstances that plagued its production. Be a comic book movie that acts exactly like you'd expect a live action comic book movie to be like. And to make sure this successfully happens, Schumacher uses the two villains in this movie, Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze, to help establish the exact lighthearted tone he wanted Batman and Robin to have. Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze are a duo that unexpectedly works well and arguably carries the entire movie. Poison Ivy, a self-aware, straight-to-the-point, zany character with an origin story that gives her enough depth to create an actual conversation considering she does have a point until she becomes a supervillain. I spent my life trying to protect plants from extinction, and now you corrupt my research. Logically, one could potentially argue that if her confrontation with Bruce Wayne had gone well at the beginning of the movie, her powers could have been used for good and she may have not gone down the wrong path. Throughout Batman and Robin, Ivy spirals into her madness that consistently grows to the point where she wants to take over the planet with her counterpart, Mr. Freeze. A cold-hearted man, pun intended, who has a small level of warmth that's hidden behind his act when he's around characters like Ivy, Batman, and Robin. Unlike Ivy, he's methodical and always trying to plan out his next move and his grand plan to the point where he tries to get his henchmen to plan out a musical number. Turns to snow in my clutch. Come on, sing! Louder, come on, sing, 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 come on! Wait, is Batman and Robin a Christmas movie? You know what? Never mind. Mr. Freeze has an extra layer of death because his villainy tendencies spawn from his obsessive love for his wife Nora, who's cryogenically frozen due to having McGregor Syndrome. Together, they have this perfect chemistry despite being polar opposites, pun intended. Mr. Freeze spends the entire movie essentially doing all of the major work that needs to be done for their grand plan of taking over the planet. Meanwhile, Ivy spends most of the time bossing people around, perfectly using her pheromone dust to control anyone that comes into contact with her, and if that doesn't work, she uses Bane as her henchman to do any extra heavy lifting. You have an experienced mad scientist with actual resources and an eco-friendly obsessive researcher that's learning how to be a villain working together, and at the end of the movie, the experienced villain wins. It's almost poetic in a way. Ivy breaks Freeze out from Arkham Asylum in the middle of the movie, only to end up right back in Arkham Asylum at the end of the movie. She loses to the one thing that Freeze told Batman, and I quote, makes him weak. Emotions. At the beginning of the movie, Freeze tells Batman that it's not worth having emotions, only for him to decide that using emotions to make a decision that'll potentially save his wife is worth it. Throughout the entirety of Batman and Robin, Ivy uses people's emotions against them to control them only for her to end up being tortured by the one person who doesn't have emotions that she can control, Mr. Freeze. As the movie wraps, the movie leaves the viewer with the assumption that their dynamic is still ongoing. From working together to becoming enemies, Batman and Robin highlights the power of emotions and how repercussions can negatively or positively impact a person. Positively, despite Batgirl being presented with a tragic event in the beginning stages of her life, she finds a way to let go. She learns how to ride motorcycles and lives life on the edge, allowing her to eventually become Batgirl. How long have you been racing? Since my parents died, I guess all the speed and danger helped take me out of myself, made the pain go away. Batman and Robin lacks any sense of fear when it comes to sharing these types of corny messages, and truthfully, I genuinely feel like that's an underrated trait that goes overlooked when it comes to this movie. In a way, it warms my heart to see such a simple message be executed in the grandiose experience that is Batman and Robin. The beautiful reality that this movie presents is that a comic-based, self-aware, live-action Batman movie can exist. 
we already have so many mediums that lack any positive emotion, that dive deep into the lore of Batman, that have the blandest and simplest of color palettes, that present the typical brooding billionaire bachelor that we think of when we think of Batman. And guess what? I appreciate those movies. They're all near and dear to my heart because if you can't tell by now, Batman is arguably my favorite superhero and I'll watch or read pretty much anything related to Batman. However, when I think of Batman and Robin, I think of the heart. I think of the neon over the top colors, the ridiculous eccentric self-aware supervillains, the beautiful set pieces, and most importantly, a Batman movie that makes me smile and laugh. Whether it's the simple one-liners, the cowabunga at the beginning of the movie, the ice-cold puns from Mr. Freeze, or the action-packed typical 90s action scenes, the humility is what makes this movie memorable. I'm not here to argue that this movie is a masterpiece, but I can argue that this movie is misunderstood. While this movie is meant to be aimed at kids and be family friendly, this movie is meant to be enjoyable for everyone who watches it. It's meant to make you laugh, smile, and have a good time. Batman and Robin is purposely meant to remind you that hey, this movie is ridiculous, but so is the source material, characters, action scenes, and it's plot. But you know what? Screw it. Let's have fun with it and let's have a good time. Because why not? In my eyes, that train of thought is perfectly fine. It's the mindset we should have when we're watching movies to begin with. It's less about buying into the idea of this movie being realistic or possible in the real world. It's about being able to look at yourself and have a good laugh. It's about being self-aware enough to laugh at itself throughout the entirety of its duration. This grandiose vision that Schumacher had isn't insulting or so bad that it should be thrown into the trash and kicked to the bottom of the Batman discography. With all the cards he was dealt, I don't think he could have made a better movie, and I don't think there's anything that honestly changed about the movie besides two things. Firstly, Batgirl should have been given more time to be fleshed out and stand out on her own with Batman and Robin because she was so entertaining as she was given more screen time towards the ending of the movie. Secondly, I just go all in on the back and forth between Ivy, Freeze, Batman, and Robin. Screw the boring scenes that feel forced and uncomfortable. I would have loved it if this movie just went all in on the idea of being this consistent two-hour, action-packed comic book saga that kept our attention. Those two major changes would have made Batman and Robin mean even more to me because I would have felt like a kid again watching this movie. As I said, when Batman and Robin is at its best, it feels like the biggest budget two hour cartoon special in the best ways possible. And that's why I think Batman and Robin isn't an awful Batman movie. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you really enjoyed this video, hit that sub button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, write a comment down below. Don't forget to keep it real with peace, love, and positivity.